Hey everyone, welcome back to the Wimpy Studio, and today I'm here for just a quick review of Heartland Season 18, Episode 2, called Bird's Eye View. Um, overall, this was an okay episode. It wasn't my favorite. I think I actually liked the premiere better, but this wasn't a bad episode by any means. It's just parts of it were just kind of slow to me and just not that interesting. Um, and then there was like some nice cute moments, especially the whole storyline with Lindy and the baby chicks was really cute. I really liked that. Um, but yeah, let's just dive right in. So the main storyline is Amy working with an Icelandic horse, um, who's just off, like, every single horse that she, that she works with. And then Caleb comes back, he has his pilot's license, um, and he's helping her with the horse. Um, and meanwhile, you have Nathan and Lou working together on the fire break, and there's all this tension between them. There's, like, the two main storylines. So with the Amy and Caleb one, I, I thought it was nice to see them like as friends together. You know, I've always liked their friendship. I don't really have a problem with it. I don't like them together romantically at all. Um, I just think it's weird and I just really only see them as friends and that's how I've always seen them. Um, so this episode, I liked how it was mostly just a friendship. I mean, the only, really the only scene that made it seem like there was something more was the, the shirtless scene later on in the episode and that was kind of a bit cringeworthy um you know they clearly kind of threw that in for that um uh, but no beyond that it was just really nice to see them as friends and I liked them reminiscing about Ty that was really sweet and I liked the little Caleb and Lindy Lindy interaction that was really sweet too um so you know I and I, I liked all of that and I was kind of worried they would try to like throw in romantic inklings but they really didn't you know, again, the only thing was just that little shirtless cringe scene. I still don't know why they did that. That was just weird to me. Um, especially for this type of show, like, they don't usually, like, do stuff like that. Um, but whatever. Um, but no, I liked all their scenes. And I did think the whole storyline with the, the, the guys stealing the horses was a bit rushed at the end. Like, they, I mean, really, they could have actually done this storyline as, like, a multi-episode thing. Because I think any sort of action storyline is, like, I'm down for, and it was kind of a bummer they just kind of put in as, like, the last 15 minutes of this episode and just crammed it all in there. It could have actually been dragged out and been more interesting, but regardless, I did like that Amy and Caleb won, and uh, they got the horses taken care of, um, so I did like that, um, and the, the whole Nathan and Lou storyline, though, um, this was, this was interesting, you know, um, it, it was kind of boring and slow at times, but I like how they kind of got to understand each other a bit more at the end. I also like the callbacks to the beef jerky. That was pretty clever. Um, and even seeing them sit on the tree stump or whatever, was parallel to all those years ago when they were together. I mean, I think the director and, and the writers, they did a nice job there um, with kind of making parallels all the way back. And because a lot of there was a lot of parallels with this scene and then the scene from last season, which flashed back all those years ago. So they did a nice job with that. Um, you know, I, I understand where Lou's coming from. And I think she has a right not to trust Nathan, you know, with all the conflict they've had with the beef wars. I think it's perfectly understandable that she won't. I, st I don't think Nathan's a bad guy, but I do think she has a right to be weary. Um, and it is interesting. I, I saw a point online as to how Nathan's always working by himself, but he claims he has other people working with him. Um, and that, like, I don't really get. Like, to me, I think he's doing it all on his own, and he doesn't have other people working for him. You know, they, they bring up his dad a few times, but I don't think his dad's really involved at all, or um, maybe he did own the business, but I think Nathan's the only one running it right now. So that's just my opinion. Um but I did like when Lou said Amy deserves someone who can be there for her. Um, and, and that was a nice moment of like standing up for her sister and saying what she wants for her sister to have in a man. I really like that scene. Um, so, you know, it, it did kind of seem like they reached some common ground at the end, Nathan and Lou. Um, of course, the ending, we have um, Nathan riding up to the ranch and seeing Amy and Caleb hugging. So, you know, inklings at a love triangle there. Um, but I, I don't think anything romantic will happen with Amy and Caleb. It just, to me, it seems like they're kind of building it up to be like a long season story arc for Amy and Nathan to eventually come together. And there's going to be obstacles along the way. I don't think Lou's done with, um, kind of butting into their relationship. I think there's going to be continual issues with that. I also think the Amy 
Caleb and Nathan, not really a love triangle, but just kind of like the back and forth there will continue, um, especially from what we saw in the trailer. Um, but no, I liked how Nathan was able to work with Stetson and getting him back to normal a bit, but I would have, I, I like when Lou is given like a horse storyline, so I hope they do more with that this season, and I feel like by giving her the horse, that's the perfect opportunity to do more with that, um, so maybe I would have liked it if she got to actually solve the issues with her horse instead of Nathan, but that's just like a minor nitpick. But a few of the minor storylines, um, I thought the the Katie creative writing thing is just kind of weird. Like, like why not just tell the the, the um, Jasmine that she's under 18? Like, I feel like that would just be an easy fix, and I'm sure she would still be allowed in the class anyways. Um, you know, the fact that it's moving to a bar, I guess, just creates, like, a conflict there that she'll eventually have to be open about. But to me, it just seems like it could be an easy fix with just a little bit of communication that could be resolved. Um and the other one was Logan, and he feels that because he's poor, he's not good enough for Miley. And I think this was understandable. I think a lot of people could relate to him if they don't have the the best, um, like, growing up and the best upbringing that they might feel that way. And especially when they're with someone who is more wealthy, um, that could create a problem. Um, so I thought that was pretty realistic. And Tim gives some advice by saying... Like, Miley is into you, and she wants you, and that's all that matters. Of course, Logan's just very hard on himself, which makes sense because of his upbringing. But he does recommend he starts cult starting um, and competing in that. So that's like a setup, I guess, for something later on that he'll be doing. So that's interesting. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, of course, the Jack and K and Lindy baby chick storyline was really sweet, too. I, I, I like that. And I, and I was actually pretty surprised by how much screen time Lindy got in the episode. It... They're really setting her up, I think, to do something big. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. But yeah, comment down below what you thought of episode two. I thought it was okay. Um, I would have liked maybe a little bit, like, like less filler, maybe. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a bad episode. It just wasn't my favorite. Um, but I'll see you next week for episode three. So thanks, everyone, for listening, and bye, everyone.